Hey everyone, welcome back to Office Hours here at Boris FX. My name is John Dickinson and this is number 56, I think, for Office Hours. So we've done a fair few and it's my turn this week. So I'm always excited when my turn rolls around because I get a chance to just have a bit of a play with some of the Boris FX tools. Nothing too structured, um, just to explore. And uh, if you have any questions and you're watching along, um, just you know hit me up in the chat and I will endeavor to answer them for you. And if we, you know, if we go down a rabbit hole, that's fine as well. I've got my coffee, okay? It's, um, it's about 9.15 on Tuesday morning here in Sydney. And I, uh, I'm gonna be talking about Sapphire today. I always love diving into Sapphire. And uh, we're gonna be talking about using masks in um, the various, well, not, well, I'm gonna be using After Effects, but you can use masks in Builder in the various hosts that support Sapphire. So my setup here today is just using one screen. I used to have two, but I've only got one at the moment. So I'm, I've hidden my OBS from the screen capture and uh, you might see my cursor moving around. That's probably just me, you know, inside of OBS. So don't worry about that, but you shouldn't be able to see the OBS screen. I'm just gonna check it on the laptop here. I'm just following the chat. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, everything's looking great. So if you're watching and have a question, just drop it in the chat. Otherwise I'll just, um, I'll just do what I do. All right, it's going to switch across to my screen and just hide OBS there. All right, so we're going to talk about masking in Builder, Sapphire Builder, okay? Haven't really touched much on this in any tutorials, but you've been able to add a background and a mask inside of Sapphire Builder for quite some time. And for After Effects users, um, this is not, you know, this is not groundbreaking because you know, After Effects users are so used to working with multiple layers and using layers as mats, and it's it's the way After Effects works. But you know, if you're a Resolve user or a Premiere user, um, uh, you find this even more useful because what you can do is you can use a layer as a mask inside a builder, and you can build quite complex looks. I, I'm, I've built some looks with some text here. We're going to look at. Um, and it's not going to take up bunches of layers in your in your editor. Now I'm not an editor. I'm a motion graphics artist, so I don't have you know, I have some experience, but not a lot of experience editing. But I am going to be doing um, a walkthrough tutorial um, showing similar techniques, but just in Premiere Pro. And so look out for that. But today we're going to just do in After Effects, um, just keeping in mind that these things that I show do translate across to Builder in the other hosts. Okay, great. All right, so Sapphire 2023 was released um, pretty recently, just a few months ago. And I always get a chance to build some presets when I uh, uh, when we release um, new versions. So that gives me a chance to play inside it. And one of them, one of the ones that I made was this this one here, Dirty Glass. So this is all created inside of Sapphire effect builder except for the color fuse effect which I've got on top giving it this nice color grade and um, what I'm going to do with you now is we're going to dive in to builder and we're going to break down this preset and show you how it was built and by the end of it you should be able to build your own but I was looking at it yesterday and I actually think that I could make this preset better there's a few things one thing that's actually broken that I that I on second um, viewing realized that it wasn't working the way I intended. And also the way masks work, I, I can change that inside this preset. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna fix it and then I'm gonna supply it to the team and I'm gonna replace the one that's actually inside of um, the presets, the one that's shipped with Sapphire. Okay, so all quiet in the chat. Right, so I've got a proxy enabled. Let's just turn that off. And it may change a little bit because I've made some adjustments. One thing I did do was, let's see. Uh, I think I added, yesterday I added um, some ultra glow to this. So I'm just gonna turn that off for now. You can see the difference that makes. Ultra glow and color fuse, just boom. And that's just using um, none of the presets, just the default settings. All right, so here's my dirty glass. Let's go into that comp and take a look. So we've got this footage. It's going to close this up a little bit here. 
and just some stock footage of some fire. Okay, we'll look at some other shots later. If I hit tab in After Effects and I just use the left arrow key, I can go back to my previous comp, spacebar to open that up. And to this composition, I have, I'm going to turn curves off for a sec. I have the Sapphire effect effect applied. Okay, so this is how I use Sapphire Builder by using S effect. If you're new to, new to Builder, just come over here to the effects presets panel, type in S effect. You can see it's under the Sapphire Builder category. Now let's take a look at what I've got set up here. For mask from layer, I've got layer two mask. So I've set that up inside the host. And if we open up that mask, there's that um, text. I just added a bit of katakana there. I was in Japan recently and presenting this to Japanese audiences. Uh, if you're wondering what this says, it says Guranji Grasu. So grunge glass. So come back to here and let's go into the effect by clicking on edit effect. Now I am noticing build is taking a little bit longer to open than normal. If you're, if you're noticing that too, um, let us know. All right, so this isn't a beginner's introduction to Builder, but I will go step by step. So hopefully, even if you're a beginner with Builder, you'll understand what I'm doing. So we've got, uh, let's see, first of all, I'll go to fit that. That's great. So we can see it. And what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this step by step um, by previewing the selected node. And then I will play around with it a little bit and we'll see if we can uh, make these modifications. I've actually wrote them down yesterday and we'll go through those and make those adjustments. And then if we've got time, we might just um, freestyle a bit and see if we can you know, make it even better. <coughs> All right, so it's going to roll in here. Now notice how I've, I've actually renamed these nodes. So just by coming up to the node name and changing it, this is actually S Warp Transform, but I've named it Refraction. So when you're building your presets, um, it's a good idea to name the node, um, give it a you know a, a, a name that's representative of what that node is doing. All right, so let's take a look up here. You can see we can see the text. It's got a kind of a sort of a you know a refracted look, and that's done using S Warp Transform. And just adjusting the shift values. Watch what happens when I change the shift values. Look over here. And if I increase the Y, see how it's shifting behind that mask? And the reason it's working with the mask is because I have my mask here. There's my mask. Now I've got that piped into the set alpha node. And I actually don't need this. I've been reworking this. And when I built this preset, here I was thinking that I needed to actually pipe the mask into a set alpha in order for it to work, but I don't. So we'll fix that in a moment. So just just disregard that for a sec. So that's the first thing. I've got my source and I've got refraction. And that's giving me that sort of, you know, slightly offset refracted feel. Now, next I have the S blur effect. And I've just named that blur. And obviously you can see what that's doing. Once again, well actually before I even go, go ahead, I'll just, just say this up front. Everything except for this node here has the mask. So I won't keep mentioning that. Everything is, has, has the mask piped into it. You can see into the mask port. So I've got my blur and I can adjust that. The thinking here was that I wanted to be able to you know, have the glass look a little smoky and, you know, looking through the glass, the, you know, the fire looks a little blurred and sort of smoky. And that was the thinking behind putting that one in there. Just going to bring it up a little bit. All right. Now, to make the glass dirty, I've used Sapphire Grunge. You can see it's, it's put some nice scratches on there. Now the default, let's just load preset. The default is quite different from that. Just let those load. 
if you're wondering um, what's happening with this and you think nothing's happening, just look down the bottom left hand corner. It says loading presets, please wait. All right, now, it's a bit hard to tell what's going on here. I'm going to preview on black. There we go. So there's a whole bunch of S grunge presets in here. And the default looks like that. Okay, kind of like a dirty floor. It's going to cancel that. Well, I've obviously made some adjustments. And if we take a look, just a quick 101 of S Grunge. S Grunge is made up of a series of stamps. And they're basically just black and white images. And you can see I've set, I'm using stamp one and stamp two. And I've set them both to scratches. Let me just turn that one to none. And none. Okay, so there's there's nothing there now. So I'll put scratches in again. So there's my scratches, and you can see that I've uh, made that white. So if we just twirl open stamp one details, yeah, like not white, but you know, very light gray and a slightly darker gray. And you can adjust individual stamps just by changing these settings here. You know, relative opacity, maybe make that a bit brighter. Don't want to go too far. One thing to keep in mind also, notice how almost nothing is checked here in the um, host, you know, the viewable host parameters. So I've got almost nothing except for seed. The only parameter that I've actually made visible in the host is the seed. You can always come back into Builder and you know make these adjustments, but you wouldn't want to, You don't want to have hundreds and hundreds of parameters viewable in the host because it just becomes overwhelmingly difficult to use. Much better just to um, show the parameters that are going to be you know the most useful, and you'll use the most. So, just looking at this, I just noticed there's a bit of an emboss on there, and I don't know if I want an embossed effect on this. Sapphire Grunge has a bit of emboss by default. I'm just going to check that out. Yeah, see there's a bit of emboss there. I'm going to just bring that right back to zero. That's better. I don't want that like that. Now, but we're adjusting this because I'm going to save this and we're going to replace this one in Sapphire in the shipping version. So that's good. So S Grunge. So we've got scratches for stamp one. Now I did put scratches for stamp two. Just have a look over here and see how that changes that. Not much. It's just a couple of maybe bigger, softer scratches. It doesn't really do a whole lot, does it? Let's try some other things. Plaster. Now that makes it too flat. Spray paint. It's a good way to work with S-Grunge like this, just doing one stamp at a time. Otherwise, it can be a bit confusing as to what's doing what. Pavement cracks. We don't really want any cracks. Hairs. Now, none of those really make much difference. Splotches. Too splotchy. Dust. Now, none of that really helps. I'm going to bring it back to my original scratches and just leave it like that. All right. So at the moment, the grunge is like really uniform across the glass. And it doesn't look very realistic, does it? It doesn't look realistic at all. So... What I did to adjust that was I used a transition. Now, you may or may not know that Sapphire Effect Builder also has Sapphire Transitions available. You see them over here. The dissolve, Hyper, Pull, Whiplash. There's a whole bunch of them. And you're not using these as transitions. Um, I'm, I'm basically using it as a... Um, a stationary transition, if you if you, if you know what I mean. Um, uh, a mat, basically, just using them as mats. So let's have a look here. This is called Dirt Spots. It's actually S-Wipe Blobs. And you can see how it's actually sort of removing some of that grunge. Now I'm going to make that a little clearer just by bringing feather down. Ah, there we go. Now, if I 
increase the dirt level level see how that acts as a transition but obviously it's not animated um, I could animate it using these options here but I don't want to animate it I want it just to be used as a mat so by adjusting the dirt level I can control how much you know how, how many scratches or where the scratches are on the glass it doesn't look very realistic without the feather, so I just bring that feather up and like that, maybe a little bit less. And you can see this is a parameter that's actually visible in the host. Let me do it level up. That's all adjustable. So that just makes it a little you know, less uniform. All right. Now, we're down to here. And you, if you have um, a real eagle eye, you may have noticed that something happened with one of these effects that shouldn't have happened. Let's go back to refraction. That's all good. Let's look at the S here. Let's click on blur. Nice, or blurred. Click on grunge. Yep, the grunge is sitting across the blur. But when I come to this transition, watch what happens to the blur. I'm just going to turn the grunge off just by uh, disabling it. And watch what happens when I click on this. My blur is switched off. Why, why is the blur switched off? And this is a mistake that I made. Let's look at the transition. So we've got, I've got a question here. Uh, Pete, how do I get my preview? So I'll just hold that thought for a sec. How do I get my preview so fast? Um, which previews are you talking about, Pete? Um, where, I don't get a super fast preview inside Builder. You can see that's pretty jerky. Um, so just let me know which previews you're specifically talking about. And maybe I can dig into that. Because this is a five or six year old um, PC tower. It's not fast. It's only like 2.5 gigahertz, I think. 2.3. It's really slow. Um, <clears throat> all right. So let's come back to this. So once again, we've got the blur, but as soon as we use that transition, the blur disappears. Let's take a look at what's happening here. We've got refraction, blur, and grunge piped into the foreground of the transition. So now we're thinking of a transition, you've got a foreground and a background. You transition from one to the other. And in the background, I've got everything up to refraction. So you can see why this isn't working. If I've got everything up to refraction in the background, then I'm going to see everything up to refraction in the background, not everything up to blur. So what I have to do is not pipe refraction in there. I have to type uh, pipe blur into there. Now everything up to blur will be in the background. So if I come back to dirt spots, and turn on my grunge. Ah, uh, so now it's still blurred. Okay, so that was a mistake I made when I built this. Uh, when I built this preset, I had it piped in from refraction, but I wanted everything up to blur. And now I can still see it quite blurry. See that? That's good. That's really good. So if I come back, if I turn off, actually no, I can't turn off uh, previous selected node because then we'll see everything. If I just come back to blur and just bring that back to zero, um, this leads me to another point. What I wanted to do was I wanted to show you everything up to dirt spots. Click on dirt spots and show you everything. Um, uh, sorry, I wanted to I wanted to adjust blur, um, and uh, I'm getting my, I'm getting myself wrapped up in uh, tied up in knots here. Um, what I'm trying to say is. One tool that I'd like to see in Builder is something that I use in Redshift a lot, is the ability to preview um, from a selected node into the result, like that, without having, um, without having previous selected node on. I think it would be a much nicer way to work. So if that was dirt spots, I could turn off previous selected node, and then we only see up to dirt spots like that or 
you know, if I only want it up to blur, then connecting blur directly to that, and that's the result. In Redshift, you can use a shortcut. I can't remember what it is. Um, something like Control tilde or something. And you select a node, and you press the shortcut, and it connects that node to the result. It's just, a, um, I think, kind of going to be a better way to preview um, uh, your working result without having to preview selected node. If I find another example of that, I'll show you if that was a little confusing. I'm just going to bring that back and just pipe that back in like that. So I didn't want to show you everything. I only wanted to show you up to a certain point. <coughs> okay, just checking what Pete's saying. Okay, so you're getting some memory issues in Resolve. Um, yeah, build a preview is slow for me too, Pete. Um, I think we probably need to try and get um, the preview a little faster. But remember, we're working with a lot of effects here. You can see, <clears throat> because I'm previewing selected node up to blur, it's pretty fast. But as soon as I turn that off and try and preview, obviously it's going to get slower because it's trying to preview more effects. Always looking to get previews faster. <coughs> okay. Let's come back to here. And we'll preview selected. I'm just thinking for a sec um, about how to explain what I was talking about before. Um, yeah, this is what I was talking about with this solo, um, this solo idea. I want to preview blur, but I only want to preview it up to solo, uh, up to dirt spots. And if I, if I turn off Preview Selected Node, and if I have Preview Selected Node on, I only see up to the blur, because I'm previewing the selected node. But I want to preview it up to dirt spots, but not up to the result. If I turn off Preview Selected Node, that shows me the result, the result of everything. But I only want to preview it up to dirt spots. So what I really want to do is have dirt spots be piped into the result like that. And now that's the result. So what I was saying was, it's be nice to have a shortcut that just instantly connects dirt spots to the result. So I can just toggle it. Any node that I select, bang, I can connect that to the result. Because often you want to see up to a certain point um, without seeing everything else, but you want to adjust something earlier. Um, you know, upstream or downstream? Upstream in the, uh, in the node stack. So that's why I think it would be great to be able to solo um, uh, I guess it's not really soloing, is it? It would be great to be able to connect um, to link selected nodes with a shortcut to the result. That'd be nice. Anyway, I'm going to talk to the team about that. All right, so let's keep going. So I'll go back to previous selected node. And let's keep going. So we've got up to here. Hopefully that's been clear. <clears throat> then we've got glass color. So glass color is sapphire gradient. And the thinking behind this was that I wanted to add a kind of, uh, I guess, sort of specular feel to the, to the glass. And if I roll out, you can see with that selected, I've got some, um, some options here for the HUD. And if I just move that around, see how that's the... Uh, start point, and that's the end point. And both of those are actually visible in the host as well. There is also the option to change the start color I've made visible in the host. That's a good idea too, Pete. A checkbox. 
Um, yeah, I think so because I think being able to just preview up to a certain node has two two good things about it. One is it makes it easier to um, analyze um, the work that you're doing or a preset that you've opened up. And the other is what if you only want to render up to a certain node? Some of these presets look look great with just a few of the nodes turned on. Okay, you, you, you could always just do it yourself manually, but I just think it'd be nice to have a little shortcut. <coughs> you know, render up to a certain node. All right, so let's go to the next one. So the next one is glass brightness. And this is using S gamma. So a little bit of gamma in there just adjusted to change the brightness of that. You see, just knocking that back. Gamma is like one of those sort of unsung effects that is really handy to have inside of Builder. And one of those utility effects. So glass brightness. Now here I've got source saturation brightness. So that's going to affect the actual uh, video layer. And you can see the reason it's going to affect the video layer, if I adjust the hue like that, ugh, green green fire, that's always looking good, is because I have invert mask checked. Okay, so that's inverting the text. You know, obviously, if I uncheck that, then that's going to make the glass um, a horrible pink. Just thought that might be, you know, uh, a useful option in there. Next one is Sapphire Rack Defocus. And Rack Defocus, once again, set to defocus the source. And if we look down the bottom, you'll see that Invert Mask is also turned on. And if we increase the defocus width, that's going to defocus the source. And then this way, you might want to defocus the source um, and then come back to uh, Blur and make that nice and sharp. Just make that zero. So if we come back to source defocus. So now we've got a, you know, like a blurred background and we're seeing it nice and sharp through the glass. All right. And the last effect, let me just undo a few of those steps. That's good. The last effect and probably the most important effect for this glass look is sapphire distort okay sapphire distort gives us that kind of lensy look but notice we have the mat connected but we also have the mat the mask are connect connected to the lens let me just disconnect that Ooh, well that's that's not terrible but that's now affecting um all of the source we only want it to affect the area where the mask is that's why we want to use that as a lens as well so we bring that and pipe that into lens. Uh, and that's what that's the secret behind getting that nice glassy look. Looks great around the edges of the um of the katakana here. Very nice. You get that nice sort of lens look. All right, so now let's take a look at this and I want to start modifying it to fix it. I use set alpha. You don't need to use set alpha. I was thinking that I had to use it because if I was using a luma mat, um, I would need it, but you don't need it. So if I just delete that, nothing changes. Oh, something did change. Okay. So why did that change? Let's just undo that. I went through this yesterday and it worked fine. I don't know whether this is going to change the, the end look. Let's just delete it again. Okay, so it did change it. Uh, so let's, let's, let's break this down and see why that's happening. All right. So I've got my refraction. Let's go right back to the start. And we'll just pipe the mask into that. All right, so why did that change? Now, 
you can see this is actually an alpha mat. And here it says mat use luma. Let's change that to alpha. Aha. Uh -huh. So effects have option for alpha or luma. So that would have to be set to alpha. But what if you were using a luma mat? Then that'd be fine. I could just leave that at luma. And I think this is why I put it in in the first place. Let's just connect this connect this back to here. So I put a little note here because I'm using an alpha mat in here, but what if you were using a luma mat? Well, if you use set alpha, you can actually change this to luma. You can just bring alpha, you can bring red to luma, green to luma, blue to luma, and alpha to luma, like that. Now, I'm not using a luma mat, so it's disappeared. But that's a quick way to set, um, to switch your mask um, to make sure it's using a luma mat. The thing is, I tested that yesterday with a luma mat and um, without set alpha, and it worked fine because everything is set to luma by default. Now, I'm trying not to be too confusing here. Um, let's see if we can set this up without using set alpha. So first of all, I will delete that again. And I want to see how we can get this to work. So alpha. And for blur, we want alpha. There we go, that's working now. And for grunge, we want alpha. <clears throat> yep, there we go, that's working. That's working fine, the transition. Glass color. We'll set that to alpha as well. Now it's working. And just keep going down the list. Alpha and down the bottom here. Mask use alpha. Which one are we up to? Do, 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 alpha, alpha. Mask use alpha and glassiness, alpha. Okay, so why aren't we getting anything with the glassiness? And that could be because of the lens, maybe? Okay, yep, so it's working without the lens. All right. Certainly looks neater. Let's bring that mask back in as the lens. So something's going on with the lens. For some reason, the mask isn't working. <clears throat> Let's try Luma. No, Luma doesn't work. All right. So next thing I would try is I will grab that set alpha again. Bring that in. Bring that into there. And bring that into there. Uh, alpha, no, Luma, no. Okay. I'll keep looking in. Channel switcher. Of course, that wasn't set alpha. That was channel switcher. I was thinking, um, I'd actually named it set alpha, but the actual effect itself was channel switcher. That's, what's, what's, that, that's what was confusing me. So let's bring that into channel switcher. And let's bring that into there. And I'll do what I did before. I'll have alpha, 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 and alpha. Now let's look at that. Ah, so now it works, right? So, a couple of things here. One thing is don't name your, don't give your custom names the same name as a different effect because that can be very confusing. Um, the other thing is I didn't need the channel switcher for anything other than the glassiness. But then I did have to switch everything to alpha. If I was using a Luma, then I'd have to switch everything to Luma. So, 
I'm not entirely convinced that that is necessarily a faster way, but I wanted to show you, or a better way, but I wanted to show you that you don't actually need um, uh, anything like set alpha in there anyway. Let's just go back to, I'm going to cancel this, close it up. I'm going to edit the effect again. <coughs> Obviously, this presentation is unscripted. Uh, okay, here we go. Right, so, yeah, so see how I named it set alpha and it's channel switcher. I should, um, uh, you know, that should be like choose alpha slash, you know, luma, something like that. That would have been better. So I don't necessarily need that in there for everything else, as we saw, but I do need it for the lens for some reason. I'm just going to check this again. So these are all set to, notice how these are all set to Luma, Matt use Luma. And this is what, this is, this does confuse me a little bit. <coughs> this is now, this is an alpha channel, an alpha mat. But for some reason, even though these effects are set to Luma, it still works. If I choose alpha, it makes no difference. So for some reason, I think this, using the channel switcher in this spot, kind of overrides, seems to override this um, this option. Let's look at it for grunge, luma and alpha. Everything still works. So that's interesting. Not exactly sure why it's doing that. So the question is, if I'm if I'm modifying this, do I need to um, do I need to do anything? Let's try something. I'll cancel that. I'm going to come into my dirty glass, and I'm going to oh sorry, not dirty glass. Kind of come into my mask, and I'm going to um, create a luma mat. Okay. So. We'll try a different layer this time. Got this attack on Titan text. So let's make a Luma mat. We'll just force it to be a Luma mat. So we'll put a black solid in here. Okay, so that's now a Luma mat. We can't see transparency. Okay, so we come back into, into here. And look, see how it's all, it's just like one big sheet of glass. That makes sense. So let's go back into edit effect. <coughs> Let's let that launch. Right. So now, obviously we can't use an alpha, so we've got to use a luma. So it says here, set red, green, blue, alpha um, to luma if losing, using a luma mat. So we'll do that. So we'll go luma, 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 and luma. Okay. So now we're using that successfully and it seems as if everything's going to work there we go so and remember all of these are set to um, Lumera so it doesn't seem to make any difference when using this channel switcher whether you have mask you set to Luma or Alpha that's interesting remember before when we just connected mask directly that did make a difference you had to set it to Luma if this was an alpha mask. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I'll probably explore it a bit more. Maybe the guys are watching this and you know, can explain why that's happening. All right, so I don't think I'm actually even going to change that. I'll just change this uh, to... Um, or Luma. It's alpha or Luma. That's good. 
Change the bevel type. Okay, interesting. But it's not really, it's not technically a bevel, um, Pete. Let's have a look. It's really, it's really just the edges of the mask. We've got some options for glassiness. We can, there's not a lot. Um, we can blur the lens. That will thicken the bevel. Like that. But we can't really change the bevel type. I couldn't put a chisel bevel in there, for example, or a, you know, or a convex bevel. It's more like, I guess it looks more like a concave bevel, doesn't it? Depending on how you're looking at it. But no, it's not actually a bevel. Um, I got that fatten turned on. There is you can um, you know, shrink the mat. I guess that's a way of explaining it by choosing fatten. You know, uh, fatten thickens it, and turn that off will shrink it down. All right. Now. As you do when you're playing around with something you've used before, but you're looking at it with fresh eyes, um, I certainly do. I tend to add more and see if I can make it, you know, better. And I've got a couple of examples of things that I was playing around with yesterday that I thought um, could make this quite interesting. So let's play around a little bit. Uh, Title Studio, um, yeah, you could use Title Studio if you have Title Studio. But never we're using Sapphire here, so we're trying to um, create the looks inside of the builder using Sapphire effects. You couldn't use Title Studio inside of um, Sapphire. I guess you could put Title Studio um, and use that as your source, and then apply effects to it. But um, this is this is a different thing we're working on here. All right, so let's take a look at how we might tweak this a little bit. So, first of all, I was thinking yesterday, what else could I apply to affect the mask, to change this look? And my first thought was, maybe I could do some kind of transition on the text inside of Builder. So I was playing around with Sapphire Shape. Now, I'm I'm so used to going up to searching up here, but of course in 2023.5, I can just hit tab and use the quick list. So I'm going to type in shape and just click shape and enter and add shape into there. So I'll leave that as it is there. You can see how that's added the shape into it. Now, I don't necessarily want the shape there. What I might do is I'll just disconnect that. And I also want cutout. This is one of the utility effects. Right. Now, what I want to do, so I'm using cutout. And I'm going to put the shape into the matte port for cutout. Ah, <laughs> looks like wings, doesn't it? So now we're using the shape as a matte for the mask which is interesting. So now we can go ahead and look at different shape presets. And this is what I was doing yesterday. <coughs> All right, so I was looking at um, this one here. I thought that was quite good. There was also, I think it was that one. Who made that one? Oh, I made that one. Sun rays, and what else is there? Yeah, okay, let's use that one. So we'll load. Interesting. Let's play around with the shape settings. So we've got size. That's interesting. If we animate the size, look, we can actually sort of wipe that on and just keep going. Ah, so that, that actually just changing the size actually does make that into a kind of a wipe, which wipes the glass on. Because remember, we're affecting the mask here, and that's before it's actually had the effect applied to it. Let's keep playing with that. That's actually quite nice. Let's give myself a little bit more space here. What else we got? We got blur. That's interesting too. 
softens that out a little bit. Uh, swirl. I can rotate that. That's quite interesting. It's going to undo that. Um, pointiness. Obviously, I can have my star pointy or less pointy. And if I bring that down, that actually also acts as a wipe. That's interesting. And let's bring the size down. And how many points? Okay, so more points equals more lines. I'm going to bring that up. Bring that right up like that. And just play around with the maybe the center point. Uh, you see, see, look, I'm just moving the center point there, and you can come up with some really interesting looks. So I could animate that on. Let's go to the Y. That's animating on the Y. Just sliding the Y. That's, that's nice, isn't it? So if I change the Y position, uh, the center point of that shape, then that does act as a, like a really nice wipe to wipe that on, boom. And you could actually leave it, it's slightly off center, but you could actually leave it not fully transitioned and you could have these nice, nice little sort of slices. That's really nice, have these little slices into the logo, isn't that cool? You see how easy it is to sort of play around in Builder? That's quite nice. All right, so obviously we can add any effect in here as well. Um, how are we going for time? Ooh, time flies when you're having fun. So when I get to a situation like this, obviously uh, I'm mostly I'll just keep throwing effects in and you know see how it looks. So come over to the list here. What else have we got? What can we try? Um, I'm not sure whether a transition would necessarily work in there. Probably could make it work. What about um, what else we got? We've got grid. Let's take shape out. Let's put grid in there. Ooh, okay. So again, let's load a preset. Take a look at what we've got here. That's interesting. I've got that one. It's kind of like the shape we just did. Just different kinds of grids. And I'll just choose that one. Okay, so that's interesting. So, and once again, you can animate um, adjust or animate any of the settings. That's really interesting. Uh, grid size. Okay, so grid is quite interesting. Let's take that. Let's just try one more. Uh, what else can I try? <coughs> I'm not sure if Zap would work very well with that, maybe. Uh, and this is the thing also, in Builder, I'm just using my mouse wheel, rolling through here, and I'm just, just chuck an effect on, even if it's an effect you've never used. You know, just something something like you never use, um, well, I won't say never, but you rarely use, something like Psycho Stripes. Let's just drop that in. <laughs> Let's see what Psycho Stripes does. Previous selected node, so there's Psycho Stripes. Um, actually, you have to take Psycho Stripes. Let's try Psycho Blobs, maybe. Psycho Blobs. So we'll just drop that into Cutout. And again, that's affecting the mat. So noise frequency. So we can, I guess if we use more of these sort of effects, we can add texture to the mat. So Psycho Blobs, 
Um, what about scan lines? Stick scan lines in there. Ooh, okay. Now that disappeared. So obviously I have to play around with a few more of those settings. I'm going to leave that one. What about sketch? Who do you use it? Who uses sketch? We might need to actually have the we have to have the matte mask into there as well, maybe. Yeah. See how I wasn't getting a result with sketch because it has nothing to sketch. Um, so why don't I just pipe the mask into sketch? So now sketch has something to sketch on. And now look at that. Look how we're cutting away at that as previous selected. So that's how it looks there, right? Perfect for this kind of logo. Um, and I didn't practice this. This is just me. <laughs> this is me literally live with you mucking around. Let's increase the frequency so we can just get some little little nicks off that glass. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? Um, we've got a different seed. We've got line thickness. Let's bring that frequency up even more. Just add a little bit of irregularity. Isn't that cool? That is very, very good. Just busting that up. So we don't have to go into Photoshop, you know, add some grunge to the mask and then, you know, save it and or save a version, bring that back in, replace it. We can tweak that mask right here in Builder. So good. I'm really happy with that. That looks great. And if we want to add a bit more texture, um, we can add... We can go down to some of the texture effects, maybe. Um, what about a texture noise emboss, texture tiles? I tell you what, and this is me just thinking now as I'm using it as a user. What would be really cool over here is if I rolled over an effect, a little thumbnail popped up and reminded me what that effect looks like. That'd be great. So I could go, because there's so many texture effects, I sometimes forget what they look like. So if I rolled over and got a little window that had a little preview, that'd be cool too. Hmm. So let's go texture noise paint. Okay, so we we do get a preview in here, but it just, re it just means I've got to drag it in and preview selected node. What if I drop that there? and increase the frequency. Now it's kind of busting it up. I want something um, that will make the glass look a little um, noisy, maybe. Could we use grain? Let's just tab. Let's use grain, maybe ultra grain. I'm not sure whether it's going to give me enough. I'm just going to go grain size. We might not be able to see that. Not quite. Yeah, yeah, definitely, Pete. Definitely. All right. Okay. So just remember that you can play around with this. It's so easy to do, just as I've been doing, and come up with some really lovely looks. Obviously, once you've done that, you can say this is a preset and you can apply it um, on any of the hosts. One other thing I wanted to show before we finish is um, just using caustics. I was playing around with caustics yesterday and I might just save this. I'm going to overwrite. Actually, Data Glass version 2, I want to save as... No, I won't save the preset. Uh, no, I will actually. That's a good idea. So I'll save this as um, Dirty Glass version 3. I'm not going to put any of the um, tags in there. I'm just going to save that. And I'm just going to get rid of that and that. And just find caustics. 
I was playing around with caustics yesterday as well. Now, where did I put caustics? I put it after the mask. So, ah, look at that. So that's caustics that's applied after the mask. So we've still got all of those effects working with the mask, but we've got caustics in there as well. And caustics obviously is having all of those effects applied to it. Because remember, caustics looks like this. Uh, can we see it? Uh, see, that's another another reason for having a little thumbnail preview because we can't see it. Uh, let's see. Let's load preset. And I'll just choose the one I chose yesterday. This one here. There's a much more subtle one, right? So this one's called Casablanca. It's... um. Some, some more sort of smoky ones. So what we're doing, we're adding caustics in there. That's kind of flowing through the logo. But it's, it's a much sort of um, a much more subtle effect. It looks really interesting. If we put that there, that doesn't really make much difference. Okay. What about if we pipe the mask into the mask. Well, if we do that, then we aren't, we're only going to see it within this area, and I don't think that's going to be completely invisible. So, what about if we take that as the lens? It gives us a little bit of irregularity on the on the edges there, but not really doing anything. Okay. So I like it like that. So when you get these presets open. You know, play around with them, add things in there, uh, fine tune. But as you can see, using a mask, let me just come back to uh, OBS for a sec. As you can see, using a mask inside Builder opens up heaps of possibilities. And like I said, I'm here in After Effects, but you know, you can do this in Premiere, you can do it in um, any of the hosts that support Builder. Just choose a layer as your mask and then go to town. Use that to control other effects, build a look, and then use other effects to adjust the mask as we've just done. And, you know, you can create some really lovely, I think, uh, high-end looks. It's looking really interesting. Now, do we have any more questions? All right. Thanks to um, Popo and Pete for joining the chat. Um, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. I'm not sure who's presenting next week, but keep your eyes open. Um, make sure you subscribe to Boris Effects on YouTube so you can be kept up to date with what's going on. And yeah, yeah, nice, Pete. So you could definitely get something set up. Use something like um, Dirty Glass that I've already set up and you know modify it and have that set up as a preset and then you can you know use it all the time yeah yeah sounds fantastic all right so i'm going to say goodbye here from sydney and um i will see you next time thanks for joining me